OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network All right, everybody. So my name is Alisa Takeuchi. I am an OTAN subject matter expert, as me. And I also am an ESL teacher at Garden Grove Adult Education in Southern California. And I'm super excited. Um, you know, there's tons of resources out there for Gmail. In fact, you know, Melinda has done plenty of uh, workshops and webinars and things on Gmail itself, but because it's so vast and there's so many things to it, I wanted to do this little series because it's at the end of the school of this pandemic school year, and I wanted to share with you some of the tips and tricks that I have kind of learned or done throughout the year that I thought could be really helpful for you either, you know, as you're finishing up your school year or, you know, continuing on for the next school year. Because like us, we don't really know what our next school year is going to look like yet. Right now we are in high flex, which is our students choose whether they want to be in class or online simultaneously. So I'm teaching both at the same time. And so, you know, it's there's been a lot of trials and errors this whole year. And so, um, Again, I just kind of wanted to, you know, kind of give you what what I've been going through and if it could help you if just one thing could help you I will be super excited about that. All right, let's get started. Let me readjust my zoom room. Um, as Melinda was saying about you know, this, this workshop in particular was geared for very hands on. So I would love it if you could be able to follow along if you can't and or you know you just choose not to you want to sit back and relax. No problem at all. Um, and then let's see here, let's go ahead and get started. So if you've been at any of our workshops, you'll know that OTAN has tons of resources for you. Please continue to go to OTAN.us for any of your needs. We have so many um, recorded webinars that have been done in the past. There's articles if you're more into reading and you know how to's. Um, we have our YouTube channel, we have our social media. So please use OTAN to the best of your ability for any of the things that you want it to do. So let's start with some fun facts, shall we? So let's go ahead and let me open my chat. And I would love for you to take a look at the, the two questions. And it says, as of 2020, how many active Gmail accounts are there? <laughs> what do you guys think? <laughs> just random, you know, just go ahead and type it in the chat. Random numbers trillion joyce says trillion one billion elizabeth states gloria thank you for checking in i appreciate it if you haven't if you came a little bit later and you haven't done it yet please put your name and your agency in the chat as will you a gazillion i don't even know how many <laughs> zeros that is <laughs> tons yes <laughs> Yeah, so according to the, according to Google, <laughs> um, there are 1.5 billion active Gmail accounts as of, I think, as of 2019. So that's not even including like the pandemic year. So it's probably much more than that. And then question number two, how many emails were sent and received per day worldwide in 2020? So pandemic year, how many emails were sent and received per day worldwide in 2020? What do you guys think? Hello, David from Pittsburgh. Welcome. Hi, Ann Wu from Santiago. 7 billion, 100 million, 100 billion. Wow, Melinda's way out there. The 100 billion. I will tell you, 300, 7 billion, David thinks, good. 306.4 billion emails per day worldwide. <laughs> so that was the statistics that I found online. So I just thought that was, those were kind of kind of cool little fun facts. Um, so Gmail obviously is the number one uh, G email source. Of course, there's others. So I um, <laughs> half of them are in Melinda's box. Yeah, I believe that. Um, I would also like for you to put in the chat what email did you what email server like did you use before gmail i always like asking this question because you you get so many like flashbacks i get all nostalgic 
<laughs> Juno, Comcast, Cox, that, yeah. See, this is like flashbacks. I'm like, oh yeah, MSN. <laughs> I have a friend who still uses her MSN. Yahoo, yeah, I had a Yahoo. Outlook. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy to think that there's a time, I mean, and I'm sure many of you, some of you still use those emails, you know, if you would, <laughs> hi, Josh, <laughs> um, you may still use your Yahoo or your Hotmail or whatever it is. Um, but it's just funny to Juno is one of the ones that I always like crack up with. Uh, nobody said AOL, which I'm, I'm surprised uh, that used to be the hot ticket. Uh, AOL was the one or um, the other one's Roadrunner the RR, <laughs> um, rocket mail, there's another one. So yeah, there's, there's quite a few older uh, email servers, but yeah, I think Gmail has, has far exceeded anybody's expectations. All right, so if you've been in any of Melinda's workshops, um, then you know the terms club and pub. And if you haven't, if you're not really familiar with it, it's, it's like just her way of, of expressing the differences between your school or your work email, Gmail, and your the public Gmail. So I have the examples on here where if you have a gmail.com, that's a public account. That means it's open, it's free. You know, you just sign up gmail.com and you have blah, blah, blah at gmail.com. And then we have another type of Gmail, which used to be the G Suites, but now it's called the Google Workspace, which Melinda is going crazy over. And um, you'll notice because the, um, the some of the changes is the icons have changed, uh, different colors. They, they've kind of gone through a universal theme of the colors, um, even though the, the actual look of it is pretty much the same. So this is now called the Google Workspace. So this is more your Google account through your work. So it's either like mine is a .net. It could be a .edu. It could be some other ones that you use. Now, I'm going to be quite honest. We have two emails. We have an Outlook and a, a Google. So I have a .us, and then I also have a .net. And so most of my emails, I check through US, but I can at any time to, uh, check my .net. But I know that some of my emails don't transfer. They're not one in the same. At SCOE, we have an OTAN.us and a SCOE.net, and they are the same. They, they work as the same. So um, it, it really just depends on the settings of your workplace and how it's all set up between the two accounts, if that's even you know, what you have. So these are the, the terms that you'll hear me or Melinda might say every once in a while. It's pub versus club. Pub is the public account. Club is your organization. So a lot of times, um, so, not a lot of times, sometimes the two don't play well together. So if your club, your organization has either some things through Google, they may not work well with the pub or vice versa. If you have something in the pub, um, your organization may not accept it or have, you know, make it a little bit difficult for you to uh, accept it in your club. So here you'll see my examples. You'll know which account you're in with your avatar. That is on the right, top right-hand corner. And so for my public account, I have my little Huntington Beach logo. That tells me that I'm on my Gmail account. And then down here where it says Google with just my letter, then I know that that's my, um, my Garden Grove account. So be always mindful of what account you're in. That will help. All right, so here's a couple of little fun facts about email. Um, how much time does the average person spend checking email each day? So um, I just put the answers on there. But according to CNBC, last uh, two years ago, um, people spent over two and a half hours, two plus hours checking their personal email. So again, this is prior to pandemic. And uh, according to Harvest, Harvard Business Year, HBR, they spend about 15 minutes checking their emails per day, uh, 15 times, about every 37 minutes. So <laughs> every 37 minutes of your waking hour, you're probably checking your email. And I can't even imagine that the number is, um, I can imagine that the number is so much higher now because of pandemic. I, I, I'm on email and stuff all the time. It's just always open and I'm checking it constantly. Luckily for me, I don't have the, I don't sync it so much with my phone as far as notifications, because I don't want to hear that constant ding, 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 every time I get some emails, that would make me crazy. So I can check my email, but I don't get notifications. All right, so before we get right into it, I want you to take a relaxation break. 
if you're like me, this day has already been super crazy. I taught in the morning. I had a meeting right the minute my class ended. I had a meeting until 1235. And then I came straight into here to prepare for this. And so I've just been go, go, go. And so even for me, just taking a moment and closing my eyes and taking a couple of deep breaths really just kind of recenters me and I'm sure it's with you because it's so easy just to get caught up and go 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 but if we don't stop and just really take a moment for ourselves and be present then it's really easy for us to kind of escape things and so even with your classes this is what I do with my students my my class is two and a half hours straight on zoom and so about every 45 minutes or so we just take a, a 30 second relaxation break so you know i tell them to stretch their necks you can tell that i teach esl um beginning because of my sentences <laughs> this is like second nature to me this is the way my sentences flow <laughs> in my class and they're back all right let's get started email basics so if you uh, would like, you know, if you feel compelled to, you can always unmute. Uh, this is going to be a very flexible um, meeting. So you, you can unmute if you'd like, or you could type in the chat if you like. Um, can anybody tell me what the difference is between reply and reply all when it comes to emails? What's the difference between reply and reply all? safe and not safe <laughs> reply is to the sender only yeah that's right so what about reply all to sender and all mm -hmm. Laura, double check your chat. Uh, I don't know if you mean to, but you're only chatting to me. If you want, change your um, change my name to everyone in the two box of your chat. I, I'd like to, everybody to see what you're saying. So I mean, but unless you really only just want me to see it, that's fine too. <laughs> reply all to everyone on the email. Yeah, everybody that's on the list. Reply all sends the email to everybody. Yeah, exactly. It, it pretty much is self-explanatory. Reply means you're only replying to the person who sent it to you. Yeah, the owner of the email. Reply all means anybody who's been on that, who is also added to that email, it will also get a reply. Yeah, perfect. Okay. <laughs> so here comes Melinda. I sent her, I was starting to send her a, a, an email. You're my best friend. All right, how about CC and BCC? Can anybody tell me the difference between the two? CC or, or even explain what they are. What is CC and what is BCC? <laughs> courtesy copy, I never heard that before. Blind courtesy copy? Yeah, I, most of the time when I say CC, it's carbon copy. Yeah, blind car carbon copy. Yeah, so good. Those are the definitions. CC, I say carbon car carbon copy, and BCC is blind carbon copy. So now, what is the difference? What's the difference between a CC and a BCC? Oh, interesting, Sylvia, because we no longer use carbon. It was changed to courtesy. That's interesting. Wow. Learn something new every day. We are all lifelong learners. <laughs> BCC is an invisible list. Yep, means no one knows you've sent the email to others that the person was emailed. That's exactly right. So for the good and the bad, <laughs> yeah, we have what's called a BCC, the blind one. So if you are sending an email and you would like other people to be included in the email, but they don't necessarily need to reply back, you just want to give them the FYI, the information, you're going to, to CC them. So I send an email to Melinda but the information could be useful for Marjorie. So I'm going to CC her. She doesn't necessarily have to reply back to me, but I would expect that Melinda would because I actually sent the email to her. 
So that's really the difference. And some people, so if you teach your students about email, that is one thing that you might want to consider um, expressing to them as well, because sometimes they don't know um, if they just get an email from you, they just expect to reply all the time because they got an email from you. So they want to reply, but, <clears throat> or, you know, somebody from their work or a family member, whatnot, you may want to teach them that if they were CC'd that they could read the information and reply if they want to, but it's not necessary. It's not expected. Others can't be included to respond. Um, I think if you mean for BCC, we'll, and we'll talk about that in a second. So blind, uh, CC means that the person that you're sending it to does not know that they're in the that they're part of that email chain. So sometimes, for example, maybe I want to send Melinda an email, and um, I it's maybe it's something. How can I explain it? It could be something that's a little sensitive as far as like maybe I'm trying to work out a problem with her we're trying to problem solve something maybe there's a conflict between her and I and I would really like Marjorie to be in on this conversation but I don't want Melinda to know that Marjorie's on in on this conversation so I'm going to BCC Marjorie so she still gets the email she still sees it but Melinda doesn't know that Marjorie's gotten it okay um BCC will see two and see Yes, exactly. So uh, Marjorie, who was the blind CC, will see who got the email, you know, who got the email and who it was from, but the person who got the email will not know. Okay, so that could be helpful and hurtful because if uh, it used to be, I don't know if it's still like this, and Melinda, you might want to confirm with me, if a BCC replies all, then everybody will see who's on the BCC. Is that correct? Does that sound right? That sounds right. Yeah. So you have to be very careful that you, you, know, you either call or text your BCC person and say, hey, don't reply to this. <laughs> I'm sending it to you. You know, because if Marjorie does decide to reply, Melinda will see that she was on the BCC and she might feel hurt that, you know, she didn't know. Okay. So again, it's, it's one of those things where you have to be very careful about who you put in the blind CCC. Now, I will tell you, though, the reason why I use the BCC is because I send my students an email every day, but I don't want all my students to know. Okay, so the reason why you might want to use the BCC is if you were going to send a bunch of people an email, but you didn't really express to everybody else that you would be sharing their email addresses, and some people are very sensitive about that. So you might want to put everybody in the BCC. So everybody's getting the email, but they're not seeing everybody else's email addresses. So that's what I do with my students. I send an email to my students almost every day, but I put everybody in the BCC so that they can't see it. If they want to share their email address, they can share it amongst themselves, but I'm not going to share their email addresses with others without asking them first. So that would be another way, like a, a nice way to use the BCC um, so that you're kind of keeping everybody's privacy. So sometimes if you have that, you know, if you're making that family list, like if you have a family reunion coming up, you don't know. I mean, maybe, you know, you're like, oh, we're all family, but eh, you never know if somebody is really kind of private with their, their email address and they don't want others to know it, put it in the BCC. Everybody gets the email, but they won't see everybody else's um, email address. And then um, the smart compose feedback, kind of a new thing. Um, it's, it's pretty automatic when you sign up for a Gmail and, and, you know, as you're updating and things like that, as you're typing an email, what it does, it'll start auto filling some of the responses they think that you're trying to say. So uh, even when you reply, if Melinda sends me an email, as soon as I hit hi, it'll say Melinda, <laughs> because it knows that I'm probably going to say that because she sent me the email. So it's pretty smart in that way. So then I will start typing thank you, and then it'll say for the email. And all I have to do is click after it, and it'll automatically push that sentence for me. When you send a message to students within Classroom, Classroom sends those messages as BC. Oh, yes, yes. Read, I read Gloria's message above. That's why okay. I put that in. I'm sorry. Oh, that's OK. Let's see here. Gloria says, uh, even when sending a mail to all my students. Oh, yes. Yeah. Thank you, Melinda. 
Yeah. So I use Gmail more than my classroom. I have a classroom and such, but yeah, most of my communication is through Gmail. Um, but yeah, you're right, Gloria, uh, through classroom. All right. So let's talk about settings. When you go into Gmail settings, oh man, you could spend a whole day <laughs> looking at all the different possibilities of, of what you can and can't do or what you want it to do and not want it to do um, in within the settings of Gmail, just Gmail, not even just Google, just Gmail. But what I would say to you is, if, if I can give you any kind of advice, is anytime you make any kind of changes as you're reading the lists and you're like, oh, I like that, or oh, I don't want that, that I like that, I like that, write down what you do. Because when you go back to Gmail and all of a sudden it's changed and you're like, wait a minute, that's not what I wanted to do, or why is it doing that all of a sudden? Go back to your settings. If you wrote it down, you can go back and re, re undo all the things that you've done and then decide if you like it or not. OK, because I have done that plenty of times, especially when I get a new phone or a new computer, I go through all the settings. and I'm like deciding what I want and what I don't want. And then when I take a look at it, I have no idea what I've what I've clicked on. And so I can't unfix or I can't fix what I've what I've changed unless I write it down. OK, so just, you know, some side advice. And then um, just be mindful. Also, if you are using your uh, school or your work uh your club then there may be some settings that are either defaulted and you can't change it or they're blocked and you can't change it so just be mindful of that so your your gmail you're going to be able to do anything you want everything is open to you you can fix and do whatever you want but if you're looking for that same setting on your work uh, gmail it may not be there or you may not have access to it so just kind of be mindful for that so i am going to <coughs> excuse me I am going to open my school. So like Melinda, in fact, I'm going to step back real quick. I'm going to ask you, how many Gmail accounts do you have? I would like for you to write it in the chat, <laughs> type it in the chat. How many Gmail, whether it be work, the club or the pub, how many do you have? Two, a lot of people say two, kind of average, two. Melinda, 17. <laughs> two. A lot of you have two. Probably most likely maybe your personal Gmail and then maybe a work, you know, club, a pub and a club. Gloria, five. Yeah, I'm almost close with uh, Melinda. If not 17, probably maybe 15 or 16. I have quite a few also. And a lot of them, some of them I don't use anymore. They're like for demo purposes or whatnot. But for actually active use, I have about seven that I actively use all the time. <laughs> I know. And it is. It's exactly that, Elizabeth. <laughs> so um, I just want you to, again, be mindful of which account you're on. If you have two, even if you only have two, be mindful of which account you're on by looking at your avatar on the top right corner, because some of your settings may be different between your Gmail and your work uh, Gmail. <laughs> All right. So I have my personal Gmail and then I have my work, my .NET. But then I also have another Gmail that I use with my students, because for a long, long time, my students did not have a school email address. So we had to use Gmail, but I didn't want my students use it. I didn't want my personal that I use for everything else, my students to be involved in that one. So I created another one specifically for my students. And so that's why I had an, an additional one. And then because I used to do a lot of races, um, like 5Ks and half marathons and stuff like that, I didn't want all that junk mail every time you sign up for something in my personal Gmail. So I created another one. It's called Running to Eat. So anytime I sign up for a race or any kind of promotion or anything, I use that email. So all the junk stuff goes into that email. So it's like I just have different emails for different occasions. And so that's why I ended up with so many. It's kind of an obsession. Shh, don't tell anybody. All right, I am going to show you my other account. All right, let me switch uh, views. All right, do you see, oh, do you see my snippet? Let me get rid of that. All right, so do you see uh, Google, the Google homepage? Anybody? 
Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. So as you can see, my avatar has changed. So my picture on my student um, Gmail account, I know what it is because it's this picture. It's me on Zoom. You can't really tell. But and then if I hover over it, it will tell me what account it is. So it says Elisa Takeuchi, L-E-C, which is the acronym for my school, my name and at gmail.com. So this is the email that my students use. So as you can see, I have all my emails that my students use, and this is going to be a teachable moment. So if you have one of these Gmail accounts and you have all of these emails in here, so if you're like me, I just stack them all on top. I don't really organize it that much, except for maybe once a year, like in the summertime when I have a little bit more time, I will go through and clean it all out. I'll either delete emails that I don't need anymore or I'll put them in folders. I do it all and then all of a sudden I will have zero in my inbox. And it's really a lovely feeling. But then as time goes by and school comes on, they just get packed, stacked on top of each other again. And lo and behold, I have 1,502 <laughs> emails in my inbox. So. If you look here, here's your list of different um, places that different um, uh, properties of Gmail. So in my inbox, this number right here tells me how many unread emails I have. So I usually try to keep this at zero. If you look at some of my other accounts, um, I usually have that at zero because I really try hard to really read all my emails or at least delete them if I don't need it anymore or whatnot. But because I have 51, these were from students when they had a, a homework assignment and I actually graded it on a separate thing. So they, um, I graded it, but I didn't really need it in an email. So what I can do is, and I don't know if you know this, you can tell the difference between what's read and what's unread by the look of it. If it's bold, then this means it hasn't been read. I haven't opened it yet. And if it's not, if it's you know lighter black, then that means I have opened this email, okay? And you can change that as well. You can make this back to unread, uh, yeah, back to an unread. Or, and I can also change these right here to make it read. So I don't like having 51 unread emails. And I know that I've already checked all this, so I don't, I don't have to worry about it. So I'm gonna come up here if I check the box, it will check everything. And I don't really want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the arrow next to the inbox. And it says, what do you want to check? Red, unread, starred, or unstarred. I want to check all my unread emails, all my unread emails. So see how it skipped all of these, but then it checked all of these. These are all my unread emails. And I can come here to the skinny snowman, which is always the more, and I'm going to say mark as red. So I don't have to click every single email to open it and then close it, open it and close it to mark it as red. I can just go boop. And now all of those ones that are checked that were bold are now not bold. And again, I can use this checkbox. I don't have to go check, 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 check. I can come right here and click on this and now they're all unchecked. So again, you could check them, you can uncheck them. You can check just, if I know that there was an email that I starred because it was kind of important and I don't wanna go through and I'll look at all the stars, I can just go here and then it checks all the ones that are starred for me. So this is a pretty powerful tool. This little box right here really could be a time saver for you if you're, um, if you're like me and you had a lot of you know, unread emails and things. Now. Alisa, it still says 40. You still have 40 unread emails. Well, what happens is that my I'm only at 50. I only have 50 emails per page. And so what it does is it only marked the 50 within the 50. So if I want all of these to be gone, I have to go to the next page, the next page. And see, oh, I have more unread emails. And I could do the same thing over and again. I come to the arrow, I click unread, I go to the skinny snowman, and I mark as red. Okay, and then I uncheck all of these. And now it still says I have 17 left, so I go to the next one. And here's some more. So it makes it a little bit faster. It's, the process is a little bit faster. And again, but if you keep up with your inbox, this isn't even an issue for you anymore. Skinny snowman, Marcus Red. 
and now I'm done. Zero, boop, the goal. That is the goal. We want zero unread emails. Now, if you're looking at your email right now, if you're looking at your email and you see this and you have 1,385 unread emails, mm, most likely they're not, they weren't important enough for you to open them. I mean, unless they're brand new. So what you can do is you can go through and do your unread and remember, you can go through, oopsie, I don't have any more unreads, but you can go through and then uh, you can delete. So, you know, I'm just going to pretend like this was, oh, let me, in fact, I could just do it. Mark is, mm. you can go through and you can actually just delete them. Just go down to the, down your list and you can delete all of those if you want. And you could do it all lump one sum, uh, one lump sum per page. Now let's go back to this real quick. The default, are we on settings? Yes. The default for Gmail is 50 emails per page, 50 emails per page. And we're going to go through and we're going to change that right now. So what I would like you to do is in your email, I would like you to go to your settings, which is that little gear on the top right corner. And you're going to click on that. I'm going to move my Zoom page just a minute. Sorry, just a second. Oops. OK, so on the top right corner, you will see the gear. I'd like you to click on it. The first thing that you're going to see is the quick settings. This is fairly new. It didn't do this before. <clears throat> Excuse me. And these are kind of like the top things that you can do with your settings. But what we want to do is we want to see all the settings. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. So if you clicked on all settings, you're going to see all the different options of what you can do in your Gmail. And this is just the first page. There are so many other things. So this is just general. If you see that top toolbar at the top, you're going to see all these. So general has all these labels inbox, accounts, filters, blah, 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 blah. You could spend hours <laughs> fixing up your settings the way you want. Customize your settings the way you want. But again, it really can take a long time. OK, so the first things that you're going to want to look at is language defaults as English. Uh, probably when you set up your account, that's what it, uh, it does. But if, if at any time you wanted to change the uh, account language, you could. Um, I have found that some of my students have changed it. And I go back and forth with that because I really want them to learn how to use how to navigate things in English. But if it helps them to understand the emails and things that are being sent to them, well, you know, what can I do? So, you know, this is another thing. If you um, want to tell your students to change their settings to their language, they can. Or if you want to tell your students, change this only to English, you can. Okay. So that's another thing with Gmail or your .NETs or your school emails. Um, you can ch have them change this also. So this applies to your students as well. All right. So right here, the third one down, I think it was, it says maximum page size. It defaults at 50. And the most you could do is 100. So that's what I usually do. I usually send it as send it as 100 because I don't want to have to keep going page, page, page. If I need to, I just have 100 and then it's it takes it a lot lower. OK, now I'm going to change. Um, I'm going to go back to the slide share. All right. Do you see the my presentation with settings? Yes. No. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Melinda. <laughs> Sorry to catch you off guard. All right. So <clears throat> we talked about taking time to go through the settings, write down what you've changed. Some settings may be blocked or defaulted in your club. Yeah, your your work account. All right. So. Here's your you're welcome number one. When I show you this, you're going to be, if you don't, if you haven't already done it, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, Alisa, thank you so much. And I'm going to say, you're welcome. So this particular setting right here will, could keep you from not getting fired, keep you from not getting divorced, <laughs> keep you from not getting in trouble with your family. So 
when you send an email, if anybody's ever done this where they've written an angry email because something happened at work, you've had a conflict with a coworker, you've had a fight with your spouse, and now it's like, okay, it's on. And you take, you compose a new email and you're like, and you're just typing all these emotions and then, and then you go click send. And as soon as you hit send, you went, oh my gosh, what did I just do? <laughs> right. And you're like, you wish you could just like take it back. This is what this is. This is undo send. So in your settings, in your settings, you will see, go down the line, undo send. It, it um, defaults at five seconds. So in, right now, when you send an email, you have five seconds to take it back. It, you'll see a little prompt at the bottom left-hand corner of your email, and it will say undo send, or it says email sent undo, and you can hit yes in five seconds. But if you go to your, right underneath the maximum page, we change that to 100, right underneath that, change this to 30 seconds. It will, it could potentially save your life. Okay. Because if you want it sent, it's still going to send. But if you don't want it sent, you can take it back. And it's magical. Okay. Because there's been a couple of times where I have written that angry email. And, you know, if I don't stop and take a breath and go, maybe I should, you know, like sleep on it and I'll read it again tomorrow, you know, and see if, if I still want to send this email. Um, or it's blink. And then I go, oh my gosh, what did I just do? <laughs> or you, you, you realize that you sent it to the wrong person. I wish that the, they had this with texts because I've done that plenty of times where I've sent a text to the wrong person. So those are the two things that I would love for you to change in your settings. Change your um, how many emails are, are on per page. And please, please, please change this to 30 seconds. Even if you don't think you'll ever use it, it's good to have. Let me go to my Zoom. All right. Let me give you a couple minutes to digest and figure that out. Let me look at the chat real quick. <laughs> you replied all instead of, yeah, yeah, that, that too. You replied all to somebody and you really didn't want some other people to see that response, especially if you're talking poorly about some of the people that are in the CC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, again, it could be a, a game changer for you. <laughs> so you're welcome. <laughs> All right, and I'm going to demonstrate what this looks like. So let me change my screen. All right. Do you so have you should be, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. You press save anywhere after you change the default. Oh, on the, when in your settings? Yes. Yes, let's go, let's go through it real quick. So let me see here, let me get my, oh, I'm in settings, just a minute, let me, I've got too many windows open, just a minute. All right, so after you go down, scroll down, 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 save your changes. Good question. Yeah, so even if you've clicked, clicked, and then you went back to Gmail, and here's the other thing that Melinda just um, like kind of advised me on also, you save your changes, and then when you go back to your email, to Gmail, refresh. Yeah, refresh, because the, the settings will save, but then it may not like transfer over into actuality until you refresh. Good questions. All right, so I'm in my, oopsie, so yes. And so again, I hit inbox without even hitting the saves and it's asking, are you sure? Do you want to discard your changes? Um, so it'll tell me you haven't saved them. So I want to save them. Save. All right. So here is my Gmail. I'm, it refreshed. I just saw that it refreshed for me. So that's good. So I am going to compose an email and I'm going to send it to Melinda uh, M. Holt at scoey.net. Okay. You're so mean. <laughs> and then blah, blah, blah. Okay. So here's my angry email. I'm so upset. I can't believe she's done this to me. And I'm just, I don't care. I'm just going to send it. All right. So down here on the left hand corner, message sent. Undo. Yes, please. Oh. What happened? It went away. I unsent it. Okay. But so 
I've had in the past people ask me, well, what happens if you send it and the person opens it before you were able to unsend it? What happens is that when you hit send, it goes into like the vast and it's hanging out, it's hanging out, it's hanging out, it's waiting until the time has run out and then it sends and then Melinda will get it. Once she gets it, I can't undo it. Okay, so again, that's kind of why you would like to have that 30 seconds, even if you don't need it, it's there in case you do. Okay, so, and I mean, okay, so then on the other hand, if you need to send an email right away, you're like, the talk, clock is ticking. If you hit send, it's going to still take 30 seconds for it to send. So just kind of know that if you need it to go like that, you would have to change your settings first. Okay, so just be kind of mindful with that. Hopefully you're not in ever a pinch where, it, you know, you have to send it within that second. Anybody else have a question about that? No, we're good. I do. I do. Yes. So that just automatically pops up whenever you send a message? Yeah, anytime you send an email, regardless if you've changed any of your settings or not, on the bottom left-hand corner, it will say message sent. And it'll say undo. And if, if it's still at the default of five seconds, I mean, it's pretty quick. You know, you can still hit undo or you can you can view the message one more time. Also, I have a question. Um, I, I'm using the pub, public mm -hmm. uh, Gmail for my G students. Yep. And um, it seems like that's just easier. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, because easier is... Is relative because if your students don't have a school email address you can't do anything about it anyways you, you'd still have to use your gmail if you're if all of your students receive a school email account then you could everybody could use the your your dot net or your dot us or dot edu whatever your school email address is if they have the same end then then you could use all of it at the same time so I'm doing a lot of my emailing through Canvas. Are you familiar with Canvas? I, I know Canvas, but I don't use Canvas. So I'm, I'm sure it's probably like Moodle or like uh, Google Classroom in a way. Uh huh. And I'm wondering, uh, but I still have them send their homework on Gmail mm -hmm. with a Gmail doc. Uh huh. So, so that it. Mm -hmm. And is there a reason? Um, is your Canvas through your school, or is it a is it a free Canvas account? It's through the school. Okay. And do your students have school email accounts to access uh, the Canvas? I I don't think that they have a separate school email account, but we've received all of their emails addresses mm -hmm. in our Canvas. Yeah. And they're all varied between, I mean, are, are yeah. most of your students' email address gmail.com? Most, uh, most probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so if with Canvas, um, you know, they don't necessarily have to have your school email address to access the Canvas. So that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, no, there's no reason why you would have to switch uh, to your school Gmail account if everything's working fine with your gmail.com account does that make sense elizabeth yeah thank you. okay you're welcome <laughs> i think somebody else was having a conversation with her at the same time <laughs> anybody else have any other questions or if you want me to repeat anything or go back a question. Yeah. sure joyce so if you have that cue come up saying you can undo still mm -hmm. and then you go on to another email is, it disappears. Is there a way within that 30 second window to make that reappear? Um, yes, let's see here. Uh, when I did it, I, it disappeared and I was a little bit surprised, but I kind of like thought nobody would notice, but you know, but th good for you for noticing. Um, let me go ahead and let's try that one more time. Uh, usually what happens is that the email will come back. You know, I will see it as if I was still composing it. So let me just try, let me make sure my setting is right. Um, am I sharing my email or am I yes. sharing my presentation? Okay, so I'm going to go to my settings. I'm going to double check and make sure that I changed that setting and that I saved it. So, oh, so here it is. So I didn't <laughs> catch it in time. I didn't save it. Darn it. Darn you, Gmail. So 
remember I did change this, but I didn't save it. And then I left and then I said, do you want to? Da, da, da. I didn't change it back. So let me change it back to 30 seconds. Let me go down, learn from my mistakes, people. Don't do it. Don't do as I do. And then save my changes. Okay. And it refreshed. So now let's try it again. I'm going to compose. Poor Melinda. She, I'm just so angry with her. M. Holt. So angry. Blah, blah. Okay. And I send. On the bottom, it says message sent. Do you want to undo? Yes, I do. And here it is again. It comes back up. So it's as if you never sent it at all. So sorry, Joyce, that was a bad example the first time. <laughs> no, no, no. That, that's not exactly what I wanted. It was, oh. if I see that and I just go ahead and go on to another email, I'm going to like check another email, that little cue disappears. But if it's still within the 30 seconds and I go, wait a minute, I better not send that. Is there a way to get that cue back up? Uh, gotcha. Okay, so let's see. So I'm going to send this and then I'm going to go check my email here and... I would have to go back to my giraffes, I think. Nope, it's gone. Yeah, once you once you leave that email and it's pretty much um, saying, nope, you've pretty much decided that you wanted to send it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, that was, that was a good one. I, I had never done that before, so I didn't know, but that's a good one to know. Yeah, once it's sent and then you leave it, it's pretty much going, well, you confirmed that you don't want to undo it and it's gone. Poor, poor Melinda. Oh, and yeah, see, I couldn't even take it back in if I wanted to. All right, good. So again, that is undo send. It's one of my favorites that, I mean, as soon as I open a new Gmail account, it's one of the first things I do. I change my messages to 100 and I change my undo to 30 seconds. So I would encourage you to do that as well. So let's see here. All right, relaxation break number two. Especially when you're in Zoom a lot too. I mean, I don't, I don't know if you've you've experienced this, but man, my shoulders start hunching and my back is like, I, I need to straighten it out. So just taking a couple seconds just to do that will help. And your students, uh, the first time I started doing it with my students, they kind of laughed like, oh my gosh, Elisa, you're so weird. And then now it's like, Elisa, relaxation break, relaxation break. <laughs> they really look forward to it now because it's kind of just their time to get out of the study mode or, or looking, you know, focusing on the, the monitor or their phone, especially students with their phones. Um, yeah, they really need to take that time to like, just take their eyes away from it um, and stop squinting and things. All right, let's get into contacts. Not these ones. All right. All right. So if you are in <clears throat> uh, Google or you are in your Gmail already, you're going to go to the waffle that's on the right hand side, top right hand side. It's nine dots. And you're going to let me move my zoom. You're going to see all the different tools that are available, most, most of tools that are available for Google. And I don't know if you know this, but you can rearrange these so that the ones that you use the most often are at the top. So for example, if you're looking at yours right now, if you open your waffle, contacts might be way down here. Okay. And so you might have to scroll down a little bit to find it like contacts, contacts. Oh, here it is. If you know that you're, you might use contacts a little bit more than other things, uh, click and drag, click and drag it and move it up to wherever you would like it. So I use it quite a bit. So I'm going to come up here. Okay. So I use my drive a lot. I use contacts. I use classroom and calendar and photos. I use these quite a bit more than these. And I have other places. And, and of course, you can always go back to your new tabs and stuff and do the same thing. But this is kind of like your quick fix. Okay. So if you use your drive, if you look for your drive a lot, just put it up at the top along with anything you want and you can mix and match and move. So let's just take like one minute, go through your waffle, go through um, all these tools and kind of rearrange them the way you would like. What do you use the most? What do you not use the most? Things that you don't even, you didn't even know that were there. You're like, wow, I didn't even know that, um, you know, my business was here. I don't even know what that is. So put it down at the bottom. Google news. If you like reading the news from Google, you can put it toward the top. 
chat, shopping, you know. So you can rearrange and then you can scroll down too. There's a whole another section down here too. So if there are more tools that you tend to use more than others, shift them up. That way, when you open your waffle, they're right there. You don't have to scroll down for them. Okay. And then um, another way to get to your contacts is if you're in a, your new tab, you can just always type contacts. Google. And it'll go straight to your contacts. So there's always multiple ways to get to the same place. It just depends on how comfortable you feel. Some people like typing docs.new. Some people like going to file open. You know, it just everything has multiple ways, which is really nice because if you don't remember how to do it one way, there's always another way to get to it. Alisa, I have a question. Sure. Since Google has become so pervasive and it has everything, um, what about protecting? Uh, I always wonder, you know, people are putting so much on Google. I mean, mm -hmm. talent, everything. So mm -hmm. uh, do you know much about who is doing that, who has control over your info? And, and you know, all these other entities uh, surf to find out information and then post it, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, the whole cookies thing is a really big deal right now. Um, I just... I forgot where I was, but there was a big discussion about that, about how, you know, uh, businesses sell your information, you know, like that's why when you search for something on Amazon and the next thing you know, on Facebook, you'll have like five advertisements for that exact same thing, even though, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, so for as far as security goes, I don't know too much like deep, deep into it, but Melinda may have some information um, that might help you um, as far as, yeah, just security reasons and things. I, I could talk to Melinda later, so it doesn't. Oh, I mean, if we, if Melinda has some like basic information that like could be beneficial for everybody, I think that would be a, a good idea. Real quick, Google is as safe as any other email system. Uh, it will be a little safer on a club than it is a pub. I mean, by default, pub is public, but you still have a sign on. You still, I would recommend you have two-factor on, whether you're club or pub, it doesn't matter. But two-factor is just an added layer of security. So if you use Yahoo, if you use Microsoft, uh, Hotmail, it doesn't really matter. It's as safe as every other email system. So How do you turn on two-factor? Oh, that's a whole nother workshop. Come to uh, <laughs> office hours um, mm. on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and we will show you how to do that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a good question. <clears throat> yeah, I'm kind of, <laughs> Melinda, shut your ears off, plug your ears. I'm not a big fan of the two factor, even though I know, I know that it's good for me and da da da, but I, literally sometimes I just, I can't have, I can't waste the time. <laughs> I know I shouldn't say that, but it's the truth. It's just, it's just another time. It's just something else. And, and I have so many like passwords and things already, like other things that I just, it, it boggles my mind. It stresses me out to have something like that. So, but I know, but I know that it's a good thing. And I know that if something bad happens to me, it's my own fault. Which of these icons are the coolest? <laughs> it depends on what you mean by cool. Everybody has their own different, um, you know, their own different versions. Think? What do you think are the coolest? Um, okay, so the things that I use the most or, you know, the things that I think that are like, you know, used quite a bit, drive. Yeah, anytime that you, you know, anytime you want to look for something that's on your drive, you could just click on that. You can go, you know, you could be anywhere and then just click on the waffle and click on drive. Um, but again, you can type in drive dot you know, drive.google.com. Uh, um, I use, if you use Google Classroom, um, I think by default, you know, when you open up, it, the classroom is way down here. But if you use your classroom quite a bit, move it up. Um, the calendar, if you use your calendar quite a bit, have it up top. So there's, you know, it just really depends on you and your needs. But I mean, YouTube, uh, if you use YouTube a lot, you know, you can have YouTube up there. Um, maps, you don't need Gmail because most likely you're probably in Gmail. 
Um, yeah, the things I don't use, I don't use shopping, I don't use Duo. I, uh, our school uses Zoom, we don't use Google Meet, so I don't need to have that up at the top. I, I rarely use Meet unless I'm, it's with a colleague that, I mean, with another teacher that uses that. Um, you know, stuff down here. I do use slides. I do have this, but I, I just type it in. I don't, I don't usually um, open it up that way. And then don't forget, if you do happen to, if I'm in my email, and I go to my waffle and I click on drive, it will open up in a new window right next to where I was. So that's really good. It doesn't override. So sometimes if you're in one thing and you use your bookmarks, it will take the place of that tab that you were on. And you're like, hey, wait a minute, what happened to my email? Your new tab, your bookmark that you just opened took the place of that tab. But with Google Tools, when you use the waffle, it opens up a new tab right next to it. Okay. So if I'm in my drive and I click on the waffle again and I say I want to know my contacts, it's going to open up another tab right next to it with my contacts. So I can just keep opening up uh, tools right next to each other in my tabs. So if you're not very comfortable, you know, working with multiple tabs, that is another thing that might be kind of confusing. And because now look, I have I have Google contacts here and I have Google contacts here. So I have it open twice. Do I need it? No, I can get rid of it. I can just get rid of one of them. So again, and with tabs, you can move them around. Yeah, if my email was way over here, and I don't like it like that, I always like to have my email on the left. I don't know why. It's usually my first thing because I go to it a lot. So I can take my tabs and I can click and drag. I can click and drag my tabs across and now it's in an order that I like. Okay. So my students were going to have a picnic at Miles Court Park and so I had that map up for them. Okay. So again, that's just working with tabs, which is a whole nother workshop again also. Anybody else have some questions? I love it. I love these. Uh, I love this questions. I love the inquiry. What time is it? Oh, Lord, time is ticking by so fast. All right. So your contacts page may look a little different between your pub and your club. For the most part, 99% same. Um, your contacts page will look the same, but your club, your school will have what's called a directory and anybody within your agency with the same .NET will be in that directory. You won't find that in the pub because there's no way. Okay, so I'm going to open up my .NET account, my school email. I'm going to move you guys. All right, and I'm going to and I'm going to maximize this. All right, do you see my email with this is Google and then A on the top? Yes. Great. So I now know that I'm in my .NET account. It tells me so right here. Alisa Takiyu, Jed, GGUSD.net. I am no longer in my gmail.com. I'm in my school email account. And if I go to my waffle, see, so here's my con contacts are way down here. And, you know, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. I can scroll down a little bit. But if I wanted to, I can move this back up here. So it's a little bit closer. And here is my contact page for my .NET, my, my school email. And everything looks the same except for right here. This is the directory. And what it does is it's gonna take a little while because we have so many uh, employees. Everybody that has a .NET account, a ggusd.net account is in this directory. So I don't need to look, call them up or, hey, what's your email? A lot of times also, um, School emails are very uh, formula, you know, there's a formula. It's usually like your first initial and your last name at blah, 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 blah. But for me, um, my name was a little too long, so it doesn't even have my I. It's Alisa Takeuchi at ggusd.us, uh, which drives me crazy because, you know, it's like, why do some people have such a long email and mine is so short and cut off? Or if we have PFAM, and we have a lot of them, it's going to be PFAM number one, PFAM number two, PFAM 37. So you'll, you're going to have to um, know which PFAM you want to send your email to. So, but that's the directory. You'll see that in your club, not your pub. So just wanted to give you that information. So let me... All right, so here we're back at the presentation and we are at the contacts page. Whoops. So here's the difference between the pub and the club. 
All right, so now we're going into contacts. Contacts versus other contacts. If you go into your settings, into your contacts page, you will see you have a contacts at the top, the very, very top, and then you will have other contacts way down here at the bottom. Okay. The difference is, is with the contacts list, this is the one that you're, you're pretty much creating. It's your address book, pretty much. And other contacts down here is any person that you have sent an email to or replied to an email to. Uh, I think if they sent you an email and replied to it, they will go into your other contacts. So not necessarily the same list. You will probably have more other contacts than your contacts. OK, so you can designate anybody into your contacts list and that will be a little bit. So if you're looking for somebody in your contacts and you click on contacts and you're like, hey, I don't see that person. Scroll down to other contacts and look for them there. Or you could just type their name in the search bar. OK, so I'm going to switch screens again. I'm going to go to contacts. So. Please go to your contacts uh, page, whether it's in your club or your pub, and you will see the first one is contacts. So I'm going to click on that. So these are my contacts. These are people. This is in my pub. So I'm in my school email address. So I don't have very many in my in my uh, contacts list. But if I come down here and I go to other contacts. I'm going to have quite a bit more. Well, actually, I don't. I have actually different people. I have different people in my other contacts than I do in my contacts. You can create a contact if you want somebody. If you've never emailed them, but you know that they're email, maybe you got their business card and you want to add them into your contacts so that next time when you do email them, they'll be in your address book. You can do that. And then when you go to I'm going to show you on my, um, sorry, I'm going to switch my to my student emails. All right, and go to my contacts. Okay. So here's my student email. Uh, this is my school, my student Gmail account. I have 39 contacts in my contact list. I go down, I see my other contacts. Okay. And I have all of these other ones. So this person, I don't even know who it is, but they're not in my regular contacts because they must have sent me an email at some point. And um, so they're in my other contacts, my other contacts, but they're not in my regular address book. But I could put them there if I wanted to. So here are my students and maybe some other people that I've emailed. So here's, this is my student, my student, uh, my fake student uh, account. Okay, so here's, frequently contacted. So who do I send emails to the most? It'll tell you. Here are labels, and we'll talk about that in a second. You can print your contact lists, and you can delete anybody on your contact list. OK. So take a look at your contact list, and you know, take a look at the difference between your contacts and your other contacts. And you should see a difference. They probably won't be exactly the same. I, I see in my contact list, I in the other contacts, mm -hmm. there's a, an email from adult ed, uh, but the district email. And mm -hmm. I'm wondering why that's in my contact, other contact list. Maybe had maybe at one point you they just sent you an email to your Gmail account, or maybe you were in a, a CC, you know, like maybe they didn't directly send you an email, but maybe your Gmail account was put into like a CC or a BCC. And so you would have gotten the email, but you know, it had nothing to do with you or your whatnot, you know. And it's it's from whenever you created that account. So it could be from just a long time ago as well. Yeah. So yeah, anytime if somebody accidentally put your Gmail account instead of your um, school email ad address, it, it would have gone to your Gmail instead of your school, or it could have gone to both. They, they didn't know which email to use. So sometimes for us, mm -hmm. they'll put both of them. They're like, do you want your Gmail or do you want your .NET? Because it depends on the access and things like that. So they'll put it in both for us. Uh -huh. 
All right, so settings for contacts is pretty easy. If you go to settings, remember settings for Gmail, very, very involved. There's so many things to do. But if you go to your contacts in your, I mean, if you go to your settings in your contacts, this is what you'll see. <laughs> it's short, but sweet. So you can just change a few things. So you can go through your, your settings and just customize it to the way you want. Do you want your contacts to be in alphabetical order by first name? Or do you want them to be in alphabetical order by last name? Do you want to change the language? Do you want um, the phone numbers? So remember, contacts isn't always just about email addresses. You could have phone numbers in there as well, especially if you sync your um, contacts, you know, your phone and your your email together. Sometimes you'll have phone numbers. Sometimes I only have phone numbers. I don't have somebody's email address. I just have their phone number. So it'll have it by its phone number. So luckily, it's uh, pretty easy with the contact list, the settings. All right, so this is the other thing I wanted to show you. This is, these are labels. This will help you organize your contacts and it will help you to create shortcuts for your emails. This is one of those time savers that I use every single day. So I want to show you. So as far as organizing, not very good. I'm not very good at it. You can see that I have, you know, I have a few labels, but they're not all, not, a, not all of my contacts have a label. You know, it just depends on the need. So I have a label that says 2020 AM, which is my morning class, 2020 PM, which is my night class. I had an OTAN demo because I was just playing around and seeing about it. And then I have one that says summer school because again, I was just playing around with it, but I could use it for summer school. Okay. And I have create label. Oh, I am. Um, and I have create label. Okay. Uh, let me flip back to, let me see what my next slide is real quick. Okay, so here's my you're welcome number two. <laughs> All right, so let me switch back to my um, my other screen. All right, I'm going to go back to my contact list for my school. I mean, my students. Okay. And we're going to create a shortcut. This will say this is such a time saver. I can't even tell you if you send the same people an email regularly, maybe it's your team leadership, or maybe it's your ESL teachers, or maybe it's your, you know, your family. Um, if you're sending the, uh, the same email to a bunch of different people, instead of typing each person individually, you can make a label for them and you type in that label and boom, everybody's email address comes up in one smart shot. Okay, so we're going to go into our contacts we're going to go down and we're going to create a label, create a label. And you're going to name that label. Okay, so I'm going to say um, family, whoopsie, family. Okay, so I'm going to save that label. And here it is, it, it goes in alphabetical order. And now I have a label that says family. So anybody that I want to put in that label I'm just going to hover over their name and you can click on it. Click on him, click on him, click on him, click on her. Okay, so these, this is my family, all right? I come up here to the little label. It says manage labels. I click on the label and I designate them. I designate which label do I want them to have? You can have more than one too. They can be in more than one. So I'm gonna put family and I, there, some of them are already in my morning class. I'm just you know, doing this as an example. And I'm going to apply it. And it's working, working. This is four contacts labeled family. OK, so let's go do that again. So I created a, a label. I created a, let's see, I'm sorry. I created a label. I called it family. And now I'm selecting. I'm selecting people to put in that family label. Anybody I want. I'm clicking on the label up at the top right here. There's a little arrow and it says manage labels. And I select which label do I want. I want them in my family and I apply it. And it's working. Okay. And again, you can undo those. I go back to my Gmail. Now I'm ready to send an email. So this is where Melinda gave me really good advice. 
I saved my changes in contacts, but it didn't necessarily change. It didn't transfer over to my Gmail yet. So I want to refresh. You'll see that little circle with an arrow, refresh. OK, so my Gmail has now refreshed. I'm going to compose a new email. Now, I had, what, seven people in my, in my little thing. I want to send them all. I'm not going to start typing you know, seven people's names. I'm going to type in family. And there it is. I click on family. All the emails are there. One smart shot. And then I can compose my email, blah, blah, blah. And I send them off to seven people in, in just in, in, in a few seconds. I didn't have to type in every single person's name. Even if I wanted, if I wanted to add another person here, oh, I forgot so-and-so, um, Melinda, M. Holt. I could just type an M and all the people that have an M, so I could just choose her. And I'm like, oh, you know what? I, don't, I just talked to that person. They don't need the email. I can delete it. No problem. You can still customize this for this particular email. But anytime you start a new email and you type in the word fam or whatever your label is, all of those email addresses will come, will come onto that, uh, will come onto your to section. Um, this is what I was talking about also. I'm going to trash this one real fast. I'm going to start a new one. So when I, this is exactly what I do. Every morning I send an email to my students. I go to BCC. I type in 2020. I choose AM because it's my morning class. And they're all my students. And I send them their you know, Zoom link and blah, blah, blah. And nobody knows the wiser. They, they get their own email, but they don't know that everybody else got an email too. So that's it's exactly what I do every single morning. I send an email and I put it in BCC just because I just don't, you know, I don't know if they want everybody else to know what their email address is. It's not my decision. So I really hope that that is one that you will take away from, especially if there's somebody, if there's a group of people that you constantly send the, an email to, the same group of people. Put, make a label for them, add their email addresses in, and then when you compose an email, just start typing that label name and all of them will appear. Yes, Anna. No. <laughs> Anybody have a question? I thought I heard Anna. I oh, Lisa, I heard we her. did have a question that came. It came oh. to me, not to everybody. Oh. Um, okay. Are you going to be showing, and you don't have to, mm -hmm. um, are you going to be showing how to change the your icon? You have your picture there. Um, oh. How does that work? Yeah, what? we have a few minutes. Um, let me let me just double check. Let me just double check my presentation, see where we're at. Oh, I'm at, oh look at that. I was at thank you. So yeah, we're done. Um, yeah, I could totally, let me, sorry, let me go back and get rid of Zoom. Thank you for that. Do you, so, okay, I'm, I'm confused on which screen we're, I'm sharing right now. Am I sharing my email still? Your Gmail is up. Yeah, okay, great. So uh, this picture right here, how to change this picture? Is yes. that what the question was? Okay, so um, on your account, if it has a letter, it's usually the first letter, it defaults as the first letter of whatever the name of the account is. You can click on that. And then right here, you'll see a little camera. And then you can upload a photo. You can go to your photos. Just go to all your photos. And then um, you can you know, upload a photo or change your photo, anything you want. And then that, that's how you change it. And then save it. Save your profile photo down here. So again, remember what account you're in too, because um, if you have, a, I mean, if your photo is downloaded on your computer, no problem, it can, you can do it. But if your photo is in your Google account, like Google Photos, you have to make sure that that photo is in that Google Photo account and not a different one. So like if I had a Google Photo on my personal, my HB one, then I wouldn't see it in my Google Photos for my uh, LEC at Elisa. I mean, uh, LEC Elisa Takeuchi. So just you know, it once you get into multiple accounts, it, it, you really have to be kind of focused on which account are you in and what do you want to do with it. And that is starting with the avatar. What account are you in? What do you want to do in that account? Let me uh, switch back to the presentation. Oops, let me move my Zoom. All right. Melissa, um, yeah. 
how can someone delete all the emails from the same contact with one click? Oh, um, if you want to, okay, so if you want to, okay, let me go, sorry, I'm going to switch back <laughs> over, I'm sorry, I'm switching back and forth. Um, that is such a good question. Okay, so now you have all these emails from your ex and you don't want them anymore. <laughs> and you're like one-stop shop. Uh, let's see here. All right, so you can search email for that particular person. I'm just gonna pick one. Um, I don't know, I'm just gonna pick somebody. Melinda M. Holt. <laughs> I don't have that many, but you can see the point. You could put in somebody's name or like their, you know, address, email address or whatever. You'll see all their emails that come here. I can select all and then I can delete them. Done. I know. I'm sorry, Melinda, you're out. But again, it's all the emails from that particular page. If there were more, I have 100 per page. If there were 125 emails, it's only going to do the ones from that first page first, go to the second page and do it again. And then just select all, select the ones from that person and then uh, delete, delete all at the same time. So you don't have to go pick and choose and go click, 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 click. Just put in that person's name. And then even if like if I put in, um, for example, if I just I'm going to pick one of my students. Um, so I put in her name, but you can see other, you know, she's embedded in some of these other emails and I don't want to get rid of all of them. I just want to get rid of some of them. Right. I don't want to choose all. I may just want to pick and choose the first few or, you know, certain ones that I want to get rid of. So you still have a lot of flexibility, um, yet you can make it very efficient, time efficient, if you want. Next that was question. a good question. Yeah. You mentioned you have more than one email address. Can mm -hmm. you see all the emails together by just one login? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, no. Yeah, every login. I mean, I don't know if there is a way well yeah i mean i you, <laughs> i can't okay let's see here um let me go back to my um <laughs> that's a good question let me let me get rid of some of the stuff um I want to did i ask you to... lisa did you do your slides on google slide um i actually did them on powerpoint but i'm opening them i'm showing them presenting them in google slides why wouldn't you just create them on google slide um, because uh, <laughs> that's a really good question. And I know Melinda's like rolling her eyes right now because for OTAN, we have to make sure that all of our presentations are accessible and it's easier to, well, it's more, it's more important for OTAN for us to check, do accessibility checks in PowerPoint than in Google Slides. So um, I prefer Google Slides myself, but we have templates that are, we have OTAN templates that I have to use and they're in PowerPoint. And so I have to create everything in PowerPoint, but I just, and I could present them in PowerPoint as well, but I just, I just choose to use Google Slides. I don't know why. That's a good question. Um, so the other question about the email. So um, I think what she was asking was, can you see multiple email addresses or email accounts at the same time? Yes. Mm -hmm. So if I click on my, oh, of course I don't have it on this one. Yes, and I don't do it this way, but Melinda does. So Melinda, can you share your screen real quick and, and show sure. them how they, you can see your different accounts? Uh, hang on a minute. Let me close a few things because I've been busy working on other stuff. And actually, <laughs> what you want me to show is not showing up. So hang on a sec. Yeah. So if you have multiple accounts, if you click on your avatar, you'll see which account you're on right now. And then you'll see um, add account. You can add one or you can add more than one. And then they'll all start stacking up in a, in a row. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So what Elisa just said. I'm just going to go to Google. Here's my avatar. And I know this avatar. I look at it first thing. So I know that this is my pub. And when I click on it, I know that I'm that's the only account that is signed in. So what she was saying is you add another account. And then wouldn't that make life harder for somebody? Well, if you need to have demo accounts, 
this is how you have to do it. And it can, it's just kind of like multiple tabs, you know, at the top of your screen, multiple accounts. I mean, the more multiple anything you have, you have to be a little bit more focused and know which account you're in and when you're, you know, it, it can get very tricky. And if, if it's not something for you, I wouldn't recommend it. If you feel like you're pretty tech savvy and you're, you can manage multiple things at the same time, it's very convenient. But yeah, if it, if it gets to be more of a burden than an asset, don't do it. This is two factor. That, is, that does look like a headache to do two factor. Well, it's not though. It's not, it's not, yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I didn't mean it. to say that. Yeah, and I didn't mean to say that it's a headache. It just, it's a little bit time consuming for me, but but for my my club account, my school email, we uh, we have two factors. So I have to do it anyways. Right. So I can switch, if I go to Gmail right now, there isn't gonna be anything in here because I don't, where's Gmail? To right there, nope, you just passed it. It's up at the top on the left. It? Yeah, right there, middle, in the middle. Ah. Yeah. So I don't use this account that much. This is a student account. So here, um, I can tell I'm the student because I have my little raccoon tongue sticking out, <laughs> okay? I change the picture for each account. Mm -hmm. And if I wanna go to my Gmail uh, for my pub account, I just click on that. The tab stays open for the student. So every time you click on another account, you get a new tab that opens. And then you can go between the tabs that way. So it, it's not a headache, it just, it takes some, getting used to you have to remember who am i yeah so if i go to compose a message um to elisa right now and say you're mean and blah 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 <laughs> to her um i have to look at this avatar because she might not know who blinka binky is yeah i may not care <laughs> she's she like, care. Yeah, exactly. that i'm so mean so i have to i have to know who i am so I'm, that's i think i think that answered the question Was there anything else? Let me. Uh, yeah, based on that, me. Alisa and mm -hmm. Melinda, can I ask you this? So I have gone, I only have two accounts, my pub and my club. Mm -hmm. I have added at my work, my uh, public account, but is there a way to shut that one off when you're off work? I mean, as far as for some reason, I'm getting messages appear on my phone when I'm only, well, I have access both on my phone as well. Yeah. But, is there a way to close off one or the other so that you don't get it at a place you don't want to see it? Right. Yeah. You sign out, sign out of all your account. When you sign out, you're going to sign out of all your accounts that are listed in there and then just sign back in to the one account that you want. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. As long as they both are open, you're always going to see, you know, what, you know, the notifications or whatnot, whatever you have settings on. But once you sign out, you'll sign out out of everything and then just sign in you know, to your personal, when you're off work, just sign into your personal and then everything that's in your work, you won't even see until you go back to work. Okay. So you, it has to be an all or nothing. Then. Elisa. Yeah. Can you sign out of all devices through your Gmail? Yes, I don't know. Yes. yes <laughs> Why don't yes. you, can you share that with them for one minute? Sure. <laughs> I thought you knew me, how to do it. That's what I was prompting. I, I don't think I do. Okay. Sorry. Okay, so um, let's say you're in, I'm going to go to Blinka Binky here, boom. Um, <laughs> I'm not a good student, Jennifer. I know Melinda's probably taught us. all the way down to your, the end of your Gmail, which I cannot see it because this screen is so small. You're going to, wow. There's a little link. The, all right, fine. <laughs> Show it with this one. Here. Right here, details, last account activity two days ago. So there's a little details, it's way down at the bottom and you have to scroll all the way down. There's no way to get around that. So I'm gonna click on details and then this little pop-up. If you have pop-up blocker installed, this won't work, so uninstall it. Um, right here, it shows all the accounts that you have been or all the places that where you've been signed in. And then, and then, there will be a sign out of all devices mm. button right here. This is my default account and I'm signed into Chrome. So it's not giving me that option, but you should see it. 
unless they've taken it away because that's what Google does. It, it waits until we're going to show something and then it says, nope. Not gonna <laughs> of <do> course. <laughs> so you should see a button right here though that says sign out of all devices. It'll sign out of everyone except the one that you're currently using. I'm going to stop and shut up now. Thank you. <laughs> well, it is 2.31 and I just so appreciate you guys coming and I hope that you learned at least one thing that you could take away from, whether it be the uh, message un or the undo send or the 100 messages per page or the contact list, uh, the labels. Um, you know, if you can just practice one of those things, I'd be so happy. If you got all three of them, that's even more wonderful. Uh, I, I really just want to help you to, to manage your time well. And um, just little shortcuts that, that I have found throughout the years that help me as a teacher. On Wednesday, if you decide to come back, um, I'm going to be working with um, templates, which is amazing. And uh, some other fun things on Gmail. Um, so I appreciate it. I hope everybody learned something. If you have any questions, you know, uh, please ask. And if not, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Evaluation. I have a question. Oh. Yes, you? Gloria. Yes. Okay, so uh, I'm using, uh, every time I teach or every day I teach, I use two different accounts because I'm not allowed to use my um, district email to create a Google Classroom and you know use all the Google apps. So, mm. but I have to use Google Meet. Uh -huh. So so that I don't get confused because I was in uh, every day, I would have a lot of uh, uh, tabs open and then it would be confusing. So I ended up creating um, two profiles mm -hmm. versus the, you know, instead of opening the two accounts at the same time, I, mm -hmm. I opened the two Google profiles. Yeah, two, two, two Chrome accounts. Yes. Yeah, that's the scene. That's what I do too. And Melinda kind of frowns on that. But for me, I mean, if it works for you, the way it works for me, you know, who's to say that it's not okay? I, I prefer that. I prefer that more. It's less confusing. I me too. Alt and, and shift mm -hmm. and I switch from one to the other. Yeah, because if um, I'm not, am I sharing? I don't know what I'm sharing the OTAN screen right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, so if anybody is not interested, I mean, thank you for coming. And if you have to go, I totally understand. But if you want to listen real quick, I'm just going to make this real fast. Um, so if you see my, I got, I went back to, I'm going to move my Zoom. So I'm back in my account. So you can see my Chrome account and my Google account have the same avatar, okay. right? And, and I like to keep it that way. Um, when I'm here, I don't have any other accounts here because for me, I just get a lot, I just do, I get really confused. So for my school, that other Gmail that I was showing you, I created another Google, uh, Chrome account with this, mm -hmm. another's, and you know, so it's always the same. I never have anything that's different. And I know Melinda does. She has a Chrome account and then she has multiple Google accounts and that totally works for her and many, many other people. It just, for me, it was easier to create more Chrome accounts than Google accounts. I mean, Chrome accounts and then instead of one Chrome account and many Google accounts, that, but that's just me. I, I just need to keep everything separated from, from myself. And, and I think that's what you were saying, Gloria. Yeah, I, I do the same thing Melinda does too. Yes, when I'm teaching, I'd rather have two separate uh, Google profiles. Yeah. But when I'm doing anything else, I can have more accounts open. It's so fine. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Yeah, very nice. Thank you.